And there goes that man's jock <laughs> Oh my God, did you see that? <laughs> America's team? Yeah, right. Oh baby, it's a big day in sports. There's nothing like battling it out with your teammates all season long to go win a championship. Green Bay's got it this year. Huge move for him. I think it's gonna be a game changer. We have a lot to talk about this busy week in the sports world. Welcome to the In a League of Their Own podcast. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's NFL segment. Uh, diving into our championship Sunday games. Two games on the slate, AFC and NFC Championship. Start on the AFC side, we have the uh, Cincinnati Bengals traveling to Arrowhead against the Chiefs. Uh, what are some of your key points you're looking at for this game for Joey Burrow to get the win and otherwise for Mahomes to get the win? Um, I'm repping the orange today for the Bengals. Um, I'm rooting for them to go get the Super Bowl. I think that this game is going to be close. It's going to be similar to kind of what we saw against Buffalo, um, shootout type style of a game. However, Bengals kicker, Evan McPherson, unbelievable. I'm putting this in his hands, end of the game field goal to send them to the Super Bowl. Bengals 31, Chiefs 28 is what I'm going to go with for the score. And yeah, I mean, look at the first playoff game. Chase had 11 catches, 266 yards, three TDs in the playoffs against Obviously, the number one seed, a really good team. Titans defense, really good. Burrow sacked nine times, still getting the W, which is incredible. Um, yeah, I. Tyron Matthew, if is he going to play? That's a big question mark. Um, is he going to get cleared for that concussion? Because if he does, I feel like it's potentially could be even a closer of a game, but. I still think this is going to be a shootout. Um, it's going to be a lot of big plays. It's not going to be a lot of ground and pound style. It's going to be airing it out. And, yeah, I feel like this is going to be one of the best um, conference championship games I think we're going to see for a while or have seen in a while. It's going to be – it's going to be really – it's going to be an explosive game. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, two of the most dynamic young quarterbacks in the league right now. Um, obviously, Mahomes has a little bit of a head start, both with starting in the league before Burrow and obviously Jer Burrow being out a lot, or most of the last year with an injury. But, um, yeah, it was, it's always fun to see a comeback story by any team. I mean, the Bengals have had it coming for a while. I remember watching them as a kid to where they were a little bit relevant when they had like Carson Palmer and Ocho Cinco, but still never like made it this far uh, as far as a playoff push. But yeah, I'm definitely back in the Bengals in this one as well. Um, I mean, for, on two fronts, I think that Joe Burrow can outplay um, Mahomes like easily just because of, I mean, he had, he, they, I'd say they have the same amount of like weapons to throw to because they have like uh, Mahomes has Kelsey Hill and then Burrow has Chase Boyd. Uh, Mixon's a part of the pass game as well out of the backfield. I mean, on, on paper, obviously Kelsey Hill are probably a little bit better just as far as their stats, but the the chemistry of how quick that Burrow and Chase were able to pick up where they left off in college, usually that takes a while to build up, and it seems like it's built up. You, you referenced that game last week against the Titans with how well he did. I could see a very similar game to that as far as that's going to be his go-to guy. Um, if they can't shut him down, I mean, that, that's going to be a shootout in the end. Um, and, yeah, McPherson, I feel like he's going to be a big part of this game. Um, I don't think it comes down to a last second field goal, though. I'm going to say the Bengals win it 36 35, going for a two point conversion in the uh, under two minutes to take the lead um, and win the game. Um, 
but yeah, I mean, it's going to be, I feel like touch, just touchdowns back and forth, not really a whole lot of kicking. Um, I mean, Chiefs have a really good kicker too, Harrison Butker, another great kicker, top five, five kicker in the league right now. Um, yeah, definitely pulling for Cincy in more ways than one, just because I don't want to see Jackson Mahomes TikToks after the game and that whole <laughs> that whole dilemma. So uh, it'd be nice to see them go home on multiple fronts there. I just feel like the Bengals defense is going to win this game for them. Obviously, both offenses are high powered. It's going to come down to getting that one stop. And looking at last weekend, the Bengals made huge halftime adjustments in order to to stop what the Titans were doing to gain yards and go up and down the field. Um, Chiefs, they kind of just play the same defense that they always do and just let it fly, kind of roaming all around. And like I said, if Matthew is out and Sorensen has to play, um, look for the middle to get exposed deep. Yeah. And then for uh, uh, the Chiefs, too, if the Bengals are able to get home, again, three, four guys, that's kind of been the, the uh, any defense facing them, their recipe as far as shutting them down. If you can get home with three or four guys, um, get pressure, get sacks, anything to throw him off his rhythm, his reads, uh, that's going to be huge because you have seven or eight guys back in coverage, and that has been – Mahomes Achilles heel this year and just really throughout his career when people can get um, pressure on him and the the guys that are just looking for Hill, Kelsey are going to be double covered, tight windows to throw in, uh, typically means more mistakes. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, I think that the, the Bengals defense has, is going to have a huge opportunity to get one, if not two picks in this game. Uh, which could be, I mean, one could be the difference maker enough because it's going to be basically whoever blanks first going back and forth, whether it's a punt, a turnover, whatever it might be that you're not going on the field, marching and getting a touchdown. The other team, if they answer with a touchdown, you're going to be behind the rest of the game unless you can get that turnover or that stop yourself. Um, yeah, I like the Bengals in this one and be cool to see them get back to the Super Bowl for the first time and since it was 1989 they have the longest uh the longest drought out of the four teams that are still in it and then moving over to the NFC side here then a NFC West matchup uh get to see this for the third time this year Kind of a lopsided affair as in recent years. 49ers at the Rams, 49ers are 6-0 and versus Sean McVay, 2-0 and versus Matthew Stafford uh, at the helm this year in L.A. Uh, what are kind of your takeaways in what might be – I mean, one side – Rams are kind of that high-powered, like high-scoring offense, but the 49ers – as we saw against the Packers, held them to just 10 points. Um, which, which way do you see this game kind of leaning as far as a shootout like Kansas City Bengals or more of a low-scoring affair like Packers 49ers? I think it's going to be a low-scoring affair. I don't think it's going to be that low as the Niners-Packers game. Um, but I see San Francisco being able to make the adjustments, shut down Stafford, like the last game, week 18, they forced two interceptions in the second half, down 17 points, and they win the game. Um, obviously, Akers um, now being back for the Rams, he's explosive, but look at the turnovers that the Buccaneers forced late in that game on him. Um, this Niners defense – my only concern for San Francisco is Trent Williams, their offensive tackle. Is he going to go or is he not going to play? If he doesn't play, I'm going to give the edge to the Rams just because of that pass rush. But if he does play, even at 80%, if he can play 80% of the snaps, I say uh, 49ers win this one. And Jimmy G proves that he is a guy. 
like Debo. Just look at what every, the Niners team has a swagger that these that I haven't seen out of any other. T- the Bengals are the other team that has that same kind of swagger. Kansas City more just has hype. I'm not going to give them that swag, the team swag, but it just seems like the Niners bring a different element to the game, whether that's coaching players that they have on their team, their leaders, whatever it is. I feel like they're going to end up winning this game and I'm going to go Niners 26 Rams 21. Sounds good. Yeah. I'm, I mean, I've been kind of on the fence all week as far as which way I want to lean with this. And I think I'm going to stick with the Rams. Um, I mean, the higher powered offense, top to bottom, just as far as what they're able to do um, at the tight end level, receiver level, backfield, quarterback play, all of that, I would give the slight edge to, well, maybe not tight end. Kittle is a better tight end than Higby. But other than that, as a whole receiving core, quarterback play, running back, I would give the edge to the Rams. Defensively, San Francisco might have a little bit of the edge just as far as controlling the game, um, slowing it down, giving the offense a lot of different looks. But I think that we see a very similar game that we did week 18. Rams get out to an early lead, but they don't take their foot off the gas this time. They don't pull a Green Bay move and start to settle. Um, San Francisco is going to go on the run. They're probably going to make it a closer game, but I don't think they ever trail in this game. I'm going to say that. I don't think the Rams ever trail in this game. Uh, and yeah, they do enough to get to win. I, I, I think kind of the ballpark of the score you're looking at, I kind of agree with that as well. So, um, not going to be anything near what the AFC championship is just because both of these defenses are really good. Um, just thinking of how close, like, like I said, I think Rams are going to get out to an early lead, right? Or 49ers make a surge kind of at the end, but it's not going to be enough. I'm going to say Rams 30, 49ers 27. Um, Yeah, I mean, you you look at it two ways. Yeah, the 49ers have dominated the Rams, but at the same time, that switch is going to flip eventually. They're going to figure they're going to figure out a way to all right. This is what we've done wrong the last handful of games. This has been when we piss games away late. This has been mistakes we've made. I mean, Matthew Stafford, if he doesn't throw a pick in this game, the Rams should win easily. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, but I, I just feel like this isn't going to be the one. I feel like maybe next year. Yeah. But even if he throws one, so long as it's not a pick six, so long as it's not like back backed up again in their own end zone to where San Francisco runs two plays and they get a touchdown out of it, like – so long as they're on the other side of the 50, if he throws it, no harm, no foul, I think, because the Rams defense has done enough to where there have been times where Stafford does throw a pick, there is a turnover, and then, boom, the Rams defense walks on the field three and out. All right, we got you the ball back. Like, basically nothing happened kind of thing. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously zero, zero interceptions. I think Rams can, like – it's going to be bigger than the three point margin. Um, it just depends if he does throw one, what part of the field that they're on. Cause that could be game changing as far as momentum. Um, but yeah, I think the Rams get do enough to get it done. And yeah, I don't think they piss away seven straight games to the same team. Uh, but yeah, should be a good one. Both of these, I think it's going to be less, I, I'm not expecting any blowouts. I'm not expecting any, more than one possession games the other way. Um, obviously, like one team comes out hot and the other team comes out 
slow, that could that's that at this level, that could be a difference maker. Once you're in championship Sunday or the Super Bowl, a, a one bad quarter could be enough to you're packing your bags. The AFC game could be a blowout if that happens. If one defense starts super slow with how high powered those offenses are, mm-hmm. you're left in the dust. You get down two scores, it's over. Yeah. I mean, but Mahomes, like Mahomes has done it before. Look a couple of years ago, they're down 24 nothing to Houston. They come back and win that game. If the I think if the Bengals go down two or three scores early, then yeah, it's over. But for some reason, the Chiefs, Andy Reid goes to the drawing board and figures out some way to get them back in those games in like half a quarter. Boom, 21, 28 points in the quarter. They're back in the game. I don't think that the Bengals defense is good enough to get three, four stops, three and outs, get the ball back to the Bengals offense in a row consecutively to allow that to happen. But I think the Chiefs defense could if they were in a hole. I don't think I don't think it comes to that point, but yeah, if if once if it's turns out to be lopsided one way or the other, if the Chiefs are up, I don't think the Bengals defense can get enough stops to get them back in it. But the Chiefs defense, however, they've done it before, so that's like that's their it's on their resume. They've come out of holes before to win games, so um, yeah, so it'll be a. F- Fun slates this Sunday. Um, definitely wouldn't have guessed. I mean, going into the play, like, I mean, Chiefs, Chiefs kind of expected Rams. Yeah, Rams, 49ers. I don't think anybody expected. Um, I think, I mean, myself included, as much as I loved watching them beat Dallas, I think that a lot of people were expecting Dallas to win that game. And then Rams um, against the Bucs, as good, as good as they played. I mean, that game ended up being an amazing game in the end, but I don't think anybody expected them to come <laughs> to jump out to a three, four possession game ahead of them, um, which at that point, even if even though you got the GOAT, it's not enough to get you the win in that case, but – yeah, I just feel like Rams offense isn't just isn't gonna get it going like they did against the Bucks. Yeah, we will see. Um, yeah, that will wrap up today's NFL segment. Head over to our NBA segment where we talk about the All Star uh, game coming up, the format of it, and some of the fan interactions and whether or not they might be sitting a little too close to the court. <laughs>